I have to orientate my thoughts around the few slides I want to present to you today because um, the development of this software library I called uh, recently Series 39. Um, the roots for the development of this software wind uh, back a very long time. I was interested in existential questions since I was a child and uh, grew up with questions and these qu those questions remained um, after school, after studies and I came to my own solutions to have a look on the world that I recognize when I'm here and hear all those other wonderful presentations. Um, things are set and patterns that appear did also appear in my own research on this software. But we have to go a bit further back before I started this because I think the point where we, um, we have the connection to loss of form is, uh, comes with language in general. And uh, I, in my teens, had very much fun finding out how a computer in its core is working. I like Star Trek and all the stuff, people talking to computers and uh, things. But I was just interested in what does the machine really do? Yeah, you write this command and so on. Uh, Florian, could you please start the first video? Okay. Uh, and I was curious and it was a process of some years where I somehow artistic, uh, artistically learned to program it directly in assembler. And the first video uh, comprises a bit where I, from where I started and where I ended up. I started in a store, just typing my name or something, finding out this uh, is the wrong syntax and can do nothing with it. Okay. Um. Then I learned something about doing print. And then, as you can see, uh, there's a little presentation. What was about the last thing I, I did in assembler on this machine? Um, showed my affinity to, to, uh, to cross borders, to expand um, viewpoints you can have. I call this little demo no border. And it's still, it's a little bit impressive, I think. You won't expect this machine to show what you see soon. Okay, I'll say, this could never happen on this machine when I was in this stage. Um, yeah, maybe no border. There's another little effect I saw in the Rocky Horror Show. I find it very, very funny, and I tried. Oh, my machine can do it as well. But normally we were always caged in this little <laughs> screen. So um, let's go on with the slides. Next one, please. What did I write? <clears throat> Okay, um, what I find, found out is Boolean algebra as an ar arithmetic thing to, yeah, to work with. I had no idea what Boolean algebra was, but I learned pretty much how it works and how exclusive or is the oh. most interesting thing of, uh, of all these operations, I thought. And now we, I, I learned later on this switching property called not. I had no idea what not <laughs> would mean different. Um, uh, that that belonged to the form and small integer, integer numbers uh, dominate the very extensive structures of anything. So, uh, such as three, so I started to try a little bit funny. Does humor belong to science? Uh, yes, it definitely does, because if you are a Ganso scientist like myself, finding out anything by yourself and coming to uh, insights that are very, that can be devastating, as I read with Johnson and Brown, is, is, this is an experience I really had. So, humor is good to. Uh, to handle this. Okay, science belonged to loss of form. Loss of form was often uh, offended as not being mathematics. Okay, in a certain sense, it may be not be mathematics, but I think mathematics cannot be without this 
foundation. Other people's, um, uh, people here have uh, stated this out better than me. Okay, but do laws of form belong to IT? IT, and this is the idea that I was following when I encountered it. And as you see, this is my opinion. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe you can play the other video. The thing what I said was it's about language and assembler programming. I, um, as a as a kid, I really learned a bit like a language. So I had dreams of these patterns that always the same patterns I use. What you see in assembly is you have registers, registers like the accumulator, you have values and you have the possibility to store them in memory or you have the possibility to load values from memory to the accumulator. We have a small processing consciousness and um, yeah, that's, that's about it what assembler can do and I think all processing computers in principle do still, still do. So, and what is the, the special thing about assembler is, sorry my mouse, mouse is very tall. In these uh, demos that I wrote, there is a one-to-one -one direct connectivity to reality because as this code is executed um, different things there uh, the, uh, the electron beam of a an, of an, uh, tube TV in earlier days passed in time we <laughs> in front of the, of the TV um, with the pace of the um, the, the clock inside the computer executing commands and all these things uh, could you start the next one really yeah, yeah. and all of these things were I, I combined to code which uh, aligned with a time progression changed um, graphical properties of, of the machine to line by line and one to one by the execution of the code uh, effects came about where well, some techniques I had to do but that was a um, very interesting thing because I really started thinking like this mm -hmm. and when I stopped assembler programming I said I, I'm not Socrates, I don't know nothing but I don't know what that is that I know and it took another 10 years, about 10 years uh, before I came to Laws of Form. And uh, I, thought, I thought there is a connection of what I was, was looking for when I experimented in programming with Assembler. Well, nice effects. Here's a little line Bresnan algorithm that I did in Assembler. So I think we can stop here. It paints end the end of the demo. So, <clears throat> okay, next slide, please. I think I told you already something that comes about. So, um, the connection between all cybernetic systems, because this is written in my in my uh, short abstract on, on the um, on the list. Um, Anything can be seen as cybernetic systems, uh, as I learned in the last conference I was here, such as human brains, I think, as well. They are re-entrant forms, and computers as well, and all we have languages. And what I thought would be what any language must have to be a language. And this is uh, what I came up with. Um, any language needs at least two marks to decide operation and signal, the, the, the static value of anything and something that expresses um, change. So, and this is a bit, uh, next one with the narrative, uh, I call it the narrative, an uh, intention of what can be said. And this can, can apply to any word, to any mark in any language, I think. 
And in my opinion, the laws of form, what struck me when I, uh, when I discovered them was the oneness of the language and uh, of the calculus. But as, as I learned studying the laws of form, I found out that was not enough to, uh, to, to say laws of form would be a language. Next slide, please. Can I skip now? Nice. Okay, um, that's about what I said. Okay, next slide, please. So, by what I uh, postulated before, loss of form is a narrative of the principle of one, as I said, but it's not a language because it's one, so it can talk itself. So if we um, are thinking about laws of form, we, we need some um, vehicle to, to access it with our consciousness, I think. And uh, when I started to try to bring this laws of form principle to programming in a, a higher computer language, um, then I encountered the fact that in, in the computer and in the, the language, how I deal with the computer, just taking memory, storing memory, there is not a, such a thing like an, uh, an unmarked state. So uh, I came about there must be something other to, to give a principal structure that can be handled um, in software. Okay, please switch. And maybe like five more minutes to leave room for questions. Five minutes left. Oh, that's not much. So, the, so the people can okay. ask questions. Okay. Okay. Um, when I did the distinctions in my mind, or when I first read laws of form, I uh, at once found this thing: if we have two marked terms, we find a context where they make a distinction. Otherwise, they're senseless. Yeah. And I think if I take laws of form as the narrative of what of one as the context of something, I thought there would be generally um, marked distinctions that tell something about this context loss of form. That is, mark say, unmark say, calling crossing, form, observer, arithmetics, algebra, uh, speculative but uh, intuitive signal operation. I told this before. Next slide, please. Um, Okay, a little uh, intuitive picture I made in my mind um, to uh, push the, the emphasis on what we have here when we uh, um, align these these four expressions. Or I, I don't know how to name it. So we have one void. Uh, the 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 transition from here to here is um, uh, uh, is operational and these are the, the different signals that may appear. So I, uh, I was uh, wondered because these two are the distinctions as well. You can please switch, switch to the next side. And the idea was to take these two structural um, um, distinctions as real bits that um, would dis describe what uh, a software class um, would do with it. <coughs> okay, please switch on, maybe I have to speak up, I think. Okay, I've told this before. Please go on. So, a little bit how assembler in my, in my mind worked. We have this processor, it's just like a needle on a, on a vinyl disc, going through the memory, maybe jumping when the command commands it. And on the other hand, we have access to data with some registers that may have special meaning or not. And that's about it. So, please. <coughs> next, one. Ne next one. Next one. <laughs> Okay, and this, this was the idea that I had uh, at the time about my, all my sample programs. There is 
the entry, we have a control program, <coughs> and on the other hand, we have this event-driven thing that starts somewhere on the screen and then aligns, snaps in with a, with a time progression and does this uh, its thing. There's this periodic jobs that have to be done all over and over and get again. And here's a bit of triggering signaling between these two. Please go on. Now, oh, please go on. Okay, uh, uh, maybe uh, one back. Uh, and then I had the, the pro one back, please. <laughs> Sorry. I had the idea to, uh, for a um, uh, hard disk recording system and to uh, program it. I thought uh, this, this is a good idea to do it in the way that I saw in the, in the driver uh, configuration. You just have elements and you have outputs and you have inputs and you have links. And that was, I thought, a good idea to start with a bit, please go on now, um, uh, a bit uh, uh, telling the, uh, the object, the class is an input, has input property, has output property, and another bit was uh, necessary, uh, being a node or not. So we have nodes that can be input, output, and we have other objects that are not nodes that link to each other, a uh, source and a uh, an input uh, a destination belong to, to a node. In between there may be links who are input output and so on. So I, uh, and when you take the, the combinations, there are some a little bit uh, senseless and I use them to classify controllers that uh, do the, the, the threading control of what is actually processed in, in, in a network build up. With on, on these ideas. Please, next. Maybe two more minutes. Oh, yeah. That was all... Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Okay, th that was very bad, and because... Next slide, please. When it was ready, I realized, okay, signaling, talking of the objects with each other, knowing what, the, uh, what it can expect from, from such an object, worked very beautiful, but it was not possible to do anything with knowing who is there and who signals me. So I needed for my purpose of the software, a base class for this net was the, the, the base class I used at the time, to have something that the, the um, objects could re relate to in common and, and push that data around. So, and the thing is, what, what was missing was um, classes, um, um, things for, for continents. I had to set up every special um, class that I would use to, to form a network. Ever, ever new, there's no containers that would do what I wanted. And that was missing this property. And it took me about 18, 20 years to really bring this now to a close. Please go on. Uh, we have to skip something. Ah, uh, log relations. Uh, this was a long renaming process. Next slide, please. Um, it's the base class for all, as you have seen on the other slide, that makes the base as well for the operational aspect. That was pretty good working, but also for the mark class. And the mark class I renamed from pointer because that was uh, what it is, what it essentially was and still is, a class that allocates shares with other marks the same um, memory space so uh, that I could think about it again um, <coughs> okay. and the idea with input output node didn't hold so I reinterpreted these three bits okay I think every one of you has seen that uh, Three bits come from three marks in the in the idea of the of the sketch of the intuitive sketch, and uh, to model all relations that objects could possibly have in a just normal cross from laws of form um, could be uh, modeled with these five pointers the, uh, who um, bidirectionally look to each other. So what what the, the, the base class has is algorithms to uh, create such 
um, such connections if they are implemented. In the base class there is nothing implemented. You cannot connect uh, members together and you cannot put an arc to another arc in the context which is the, the uh, containment property. But the three bits decide what uh, these connection um, properties may be. <coughs> Interesting, the third one is distinctive or is very um, unnecessary at this point but it will be, would become very important later because it just says when I put something to a context I can do it on, uh, on, on the top of it or on the bottom of it and if the, uh, the idea of membership is a membership is a membership because all the whole membership the ship, 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 that is connected um, it shares the same context object. It cannot be the algorithm of this way to have you know, membership more than one context. This is pro uh, property of the cross. And this one um, stops two, maybe two uh, proper uh, memberships that are connected on top of an arc or, or to a bottom of an arc from each other. So I have content but I have it in two flavors that later on um, uh, maps to the idea have a node having an array of inputs and an array of outputs. Yeah, but please go on. I thought this was okay. But we, yeah. Pardon. We are ready, okay. There it comes. And now it's going on and on and on. It's always three uh, uh, triplets of, of functions that relate to each other. You can, uh, you can put something into a container, you get get it out and you can drop it. Yeah? You can start a network, you can say the network do some calculation step or stop the, the process and so on and this uh, triplet thing um, appears in, in many aspects in the software and software in the containments um, built upon themselves because after the mark class there come content, uh, containment and indication classes. Again, these, these two aspects of the form, containment, continence and operation. Uh, um, the operation interpreted as uh, indication, so we have an, an access key, whatever, and get some uh, information out. So, please. <coughs> I don't know what's worth skipping. Okay, this is very intuitive, but this is interesting because terms arose, were named by me, and they didn't. Uh, um, they, they sometimes lost their, their meaning, but the form is always the same in, in, in the different aspects that are uh, realized in this lot of software. So, uh, the last thing, what finished, I think. Um, a lot of this continent side of, of the problem was that um, a just a normal container that is, has objects aligned in memory and its access key maybe uh, uh, is um, an integer, a natural integer of the system we're, we're working on. Um, they, the, the interface for this I made absolutely identical for the indication inter interface of this so that containers themselves and indication objects on the other side uh, are der uh, derivations of the same thing and there's access methods to uh, managed content which is the further development of the mark class um, in the indication implementation it is it can be done by a different key type a, key, uh, a different value type this is it. And the node in, a, in an indication in, with a uh, red black tree algorithm, I buried deep in the thing. Um, uh, that this, this is then the content of, um, of a containment which is the indication. And the containment holds countable content and the content becomes uh, structure of key value with node and I introduce another one okay another one giving this thing a meaning um, 
and my indication objects now soon. Uh, my indications now in, in the structure uh, I just recently realized have the, the, the form of a function. You have uh, an item that just has a number in, in its context where uh, con uh, containments are connected to each other. Um, you have a key, you have a value of this, but the user is free to, uh, to make new derivations where this item corresponds to something else, whatever this is. And by this pattern I made a, um, a memory management where the value is <coughs> blocks or two, two integers saying place and size and the content um, became one of the other. I, I take a key, I get a block and when I say get content with a key, I get the size. And another indication object, because they can be stacked like in, uh, in, in database capabilities, the, the dependencies of, of the one and the same data that we're looking at. Um, uh, yeah, and, and another indication linked to it has the opposite direction from, uh, from size to the, uh, to the place in memory to find new memory blocks. And it's all the same code over and over again with the order um, properties and so on and so on. I think Randy is nervous. Have you got any questions? Do you want to see the uh, software in action? Yeah. Yes, yeah. can we see the software in action? <laughs> yeah. Also, okay. I've already had at least one request that you could share some of this code if we could somehow put it online. I'm still, still thinking about how to... Uh, yeah, I, I want I to... Can, we can help with that. <laughs> How much code is that? Two is megabytes with all the... How many more? lines of code? Hmm? How many lines of code? Don't know. Rough. Mm. But I, uh, I have many, many empty lines in between okay. and I have many uh, capital letters. Um, so, are we going? There's a lot that I couldn't talk about here uh, now and I see what you're doing. Okay, so of course uh, the, there's already again. Look here. Do you see the? Uh, I make it a bit that way. And now the the base library that I call Series 39 holds most of what I said here. But in the end, uh, it was a, a networking problem I learned, uh, solved in the first place and. Building up on these uh, on this OC class and po and representations, I couldn't tell you about the representations. Very important for pointers. Um, I, I use this base to re-establish this logic of node, link, source, sync, um, uh, like like in the old days. And it worked. Uh, uh, where's, where's the mic? Okay. All right, so so um, you have already any questions? Yeah. What is it exactly? Someone? Ask me. Yeah. Can, can, uh, can I can go on. There is, uh, you have can, still can not seen can anything. Can you just write something from here now? Hmm? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, it's good. Are you able to run any of the? the yeah, I, I want to do it. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, I like to say. Okay, these are component components that I use to make. Uh, in early days, you said, ah, oh, this is a killer application, so this project is killer, uh, uh, named killer for a long time now. Yeah. And what you see here is a signal class. It has no base class. It has a Boolean member for input, Boolean, uh, and, no, yeah, input. I call it Boolean language because it's the opposite of signal. And um, uh, this is a starting uh, <coughs> And now I have some uh, uh, made some templates that make from this um, from this implement, uh, network implementations application objects. Therefore, AO the name of them um, uh, de derivations with, with a short shortage to <coughs> it's, it's not very yeah it's such a thing. It's a class named this way uses. Uh, 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 being a source AO template with a base class um, base class B, 
and with uh, with with an input class that would be because it's a source class, the input class would be the node, and the possible output class. There's many ways to to create such classes. The naked one with any base class or knowledge of special other classes is, uh, can be done as well. So check it out, Michael. What we actually ran you into want to a, see the you want to see the. I the, was going to say we ran into a little bit of a snag with the next presentation. Actually, okay. So um, you know, relax. Now I, so I ran. Ready, I ran. Ready, go on. It's all good. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's all cool. Yeah. Uh, what what and we missed here? A coffee. Okay. Just a little thing. Here again, uh, what we have here is uh, the nodes that are re registered. Um, luckily, they have a, a very good numbering by name because this is the first registered number. It's the input of the George Spencer Brown circuit from chapter 11. The other nodes are uh, numbered in a row. And many things happen when uh, these nodes are linked. Uh, extra new sources and things are uh, chosen to connect nodes, and it's, it's just here in the lang language, in the lingual level, uh, brought to the level of operations on nodes. And this is just the circuit. Um, I found out the right, uh, the right order, how to, um, I'll show it here maybe, okay. How to find traje uh, trajectories by the same principle as I made the memory management to find ways through the network and then find out what is the longest uh, way because I, I stopped when on, on repetitions. So what comes out is the longest way I can possibly imagine if I start with the, with the output. This is the point where everything runs together. And this, all this principle that is here printed out, this is done every time the, the, this demo process started, starts. Uh, this algorithm is buried in the controlling objects of these networks, give the exact um, order that you have to apply to this, ah, uh, to this uh, network to really simulate what we all know it should do, and what I never could uh, um, understand really. So here is some, if you start something, nodes are started, so on and so on. I, and if it's processing, okay, there's, there's absorb and emit. This is part of the process when you do a step. Another triplicity, absorb, process, output, uh, emit, and so on. Now we show what how the, the, the values develop, and then we're done, I think. Time is off. Okay, where's the code? Okay, I'm uh, a little... Yeah, uh, we are in some state of this circuit because the program already ran, and we change um, the input signal every three or four um, uh, circles when, when we arrive in the code at this point. You see, the A signal was switched to true and the, um, the output of the, uh, uh, of the circuit is a change because uh, uh, an eight signal is red, as we see here. And we could observe how this values, ah, here you saw it was became false and the N8 signal still is true because it was a switch, it was an out switch, uh, doubling the, the frequency and so on. And we see that the inside the circuit here, by the way, there is, um, there is still a, still a, a dynamic, a dynamic uh, from, from different starting points when, when we have switched here. Yeah, you see this? Okay, and this thing should be applicable to any kind of networks. I think this would be a um, great thing to um, for right. KI. This is good. Yeah, and uh, it, it of course, of course, my my audio engine will be rebuilt soon. It's just uh, about the the base class and the, the the signaling operations, the processing always 
works the same and it works beautifully. Right. And I'm about to yeah. do something with it. Maybe I'm open for suggestions. Yeah, let's open it up for, for that, but let's, let's also give Michael a hand.